Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Tim Moody. I'm the Public Information Officer with the Randolph County School System. I'm here with our Superintendent, Dr. Stephen Ganey. And as we do each month, uh, we're out here in front of the community to share with you some of the exciting things that are going on in our school district. Um, Dr. Ganey, we uh, have got a lot going on as usual. This past Monday night we had our Board of Education uh, meeting, our monthly meeting. And uh, one of the things that's been in the news a lot recently, and we talked about in our last interview, was it is the budget. Um, last time we talked about the state budget. And then on the heels of that, at our board meeting Monday night, uh, it extended into our overall school system budget. So can you just give us a little bit of an update there? Well, yes, Tim. What happens is uh, we, we, when we get the state budget, you know, usually we know the local budget from back in the late spring, and we, we did. We've known that all summer, and the county commissioners really did, did some very good work for us again this year. But now that state money is, has been, uh, or the state budget's been approved, then we present our, we had a preliminary budget back in the, in the summer, waiting for the state budget to be approved. And now that all funding sources have been approved from the state, then we were able to bring our overall budget to the uh, Board of Education last Monday night. And that was a good time. Um, to get that finalized, um, it's kind of a you know it's an unusual process because it's not like we could you know hold off starting school until the state budget was approved, but um, you know there's some positives and some negatives in the state budget. I think we mentioned last time, but one of the good things was we did get the funding for the TAs and we did get the funding for the drivers' education, and and I think I've mentioned in past times. Um, very pleased with the local budget and the support of the county commissioners. Uh, we received an additional $500,000 in capital outlay funding uh, from the county commissioners, which now has fully funded our nine-year facility upgrade repair plan. And they did provide another $136,000 in current expense money on that side of the house. So, um, you know, it, it took a while to get to this point, especially with the state budget. But I've said to people, uh, you know, it was it was worth the wait in the end because we wound up getting the funding for our TAs and we wound up getting the funding for driver's ed, which were two big things. Uh, we still need some help on teacher salaries across the board and employee salaries, not just classroom teachers, but employees overall. But, um, um, you know, I, all, October was kind of a late time, but when you look back at it, if the budget had been resolved earlier, we probably wouldn't have had some of the things we did wind up with, which is TA funding and driver's ed funding, which a lot of legislators, including our four, really worked hard for. So Dr. Ganey, here in Randolph County, uh, we're in the middle of a bit of an unusual situation in that we are a county that actually has two school districts. And if my numbers are correct, I think of the 100 counties in North Carolina, there are only about 15 that have that situation. So I think our our audience might be curious, when you have two school districts in the same county, what are some of the results of that? How does that play out? What are some of the implications for having two? Well, Tim, um, this is the only place I've worked in my career where uh, there were two school systems in the same county. You know, I never experienced as a teacher, a principal, or uh, assistant superintendent, but, you know, the real, the real issue to me is both school systems have a long-standing history. And um, there's uh, a lot of, you know, people who have been involved with the county school system their whole career and, and their children, maybe it's parents or children went to the county system. And then you have the other, you have other people who have their whole life been associated with the city system. Um, I, I don't know that there's, I, I don't really get into the, whether there's benefits or negatives. I just kind of look at it from the from standpoint of, that's the situation in this county. Um, I, I, I do uh, have comfort in that I um, feel like I have a very good relationship with Superintendent of Ashburn City Schools, um, Terry Worrell. Um, in fact, this morning I was in an event with her. Uh, we've, we've, gone, we've had a partnership develop in the last year, Pathways to Prosperity, which was between us, Ashburn City Schools, and Randolph Community College. So I, I think situations like this are what you make of them. Um, I know I, I've had a chance in the last three or two plus years to meet a good number of students who are who go to school in the Ashburn City System. I obviously know a lot of students who go to our school system. Um, so I don't know that there's a right, wrong answer to this. 
Um, I think the real answer is that there's no definite, no right wrong is the fact that, that you still have counties with two systems, you know, a city system and a, a county system. You still have that situation. So um, I just really focus on, we want to be as good a partners with them as we can be, mm -hmm. but knowing that, you know, they're, we're 17,600 students. I think last time I saw somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000 students total. I may be off a little bit there, but um, I'm thinking 4,500 is, is what I remember last time I saw their numbers. Um, but the other side you have to remember is um, funding comes per student pretty much in, in public schools. So, you know, if there's 4,500 students there, that money is going with them from the state. If there's 17,600 kids here, that money from the state's coming coming for those kids. So, you know, I, I don't I don't know that you can really line up positive and negatives. I think it is a situation where you kind of it's the situation in the county. And um, from my perspective, it seemed pretty positive ever since I've been here. And um, I enjoy interacting with, I've met many staff members uh, in that system and enjoy interacting with them and, and respect what they're doing. And, you know, it gives you a chance to learn from other people too. So um, I, I don't know that um, there's a long list of positives or a long list of negatives. I just think it's the situation in Randolph County. And based on what I've seen from before my time and now, I think it's worked pretty well. You know, we tend not to think of schools and school districts as businesses. Uh, you know, we think of them in being in the educational realm more so than in the, in the commercial or the business realm. Yet, I think we would agree that it's important to apply some business principles and practices to schools. And one of those would be public relations. That's something we hear a, a lot more about um, than we used to in schools. In fact, you and I, along with several of our principals, went to a training just a few weeks ago to learn how to increase PR and communications within the schools. <coughs> when you think about public relations in a school context, what is good PR for a school? Well, I, I want to frame it a little bit different, Tim. Um, good, a good public relations program is one that's very transparent, or, or you know, our department, uh, or good public relations practices are ones that are very transparent to the public. And what I mean that, by what I mean by that is, you're willing to take the good with the bad. You know, you can't just share with the public only the good mm -hmm. if you want the public's trust. You have got to be willing to face when something uh, negative occurs. You've got to be transparent with the public so they trust, you know, that, that you are addressing those things. And, you know, there are limits to what we can share. But I think the good public relations program or practice uh, in a school system is one that's willing to say, I know with the good comes the bad sometimes, but I'm focused on, I want the public's trust. I want them to believe that we are being transparent with them to the greatest extent possible. Now, sometimes, and, and you know that uh, my previous job, I was assistant superintendent for HR. And there's some things that you can't share with the public. They're not, it's not public information. And sometimes people get frustrated with that. Um, but I think that frustration can be tempered and lessened when you are your normal daily actions in the public relations area are such that you're willing to share the good and the bad. Um, I think um, making sure parents are informed about what's going on in, in their child's school, making sure, you know, public relations, we think a lot of times that public relations is outside the school system to the parents and the community members, but it's also just as important for good public relations with your own staff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, whereas a lot of times you and your public information officer job, are, you're dealing with outside the school system when we're dealing with the media or different, different things. But public relations can also be inside between communication between my office and, and the principals or the principal offices and teachers or my office and teachers. Uh, what are we doing with uh, inclement weather days? What are we doing with safety issues come up? I mean. I think it's, but I think if I went back to one thing that, that a good public relations plan or program works on, it's transparency with the public. I, I, would, I would say that's where it all starts and ends. And when I say transparency, it, that includes the honesty and the facts. And, and, um, and when, when you start doing that, then I think you can start gaining people's trust in, wow, we didn't really want this to go on and neither did they, but 
they never lost sight of taking care of the safety of staff and students and making sure parents weren't pulled into an unsafe situation or a negative situation, maybe at the end of a school day, coming up to a campus and not knowing uh, something negative was going on. So as a tie-in to that, there's another buzzword that's used in, in the business community, um, and that is customer service. And again, we think of that in the business context, and yet it can play out in a school. So how do you see customer service? What does that look like? What does good customer service look like in a school setting? Well, and, and you hate to, you know, you bring customer service. There's so many things, and, and you mentioned this being a business in some ways. It is, it, 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 because you gotta, you've got to figure out what your role is, and our role is uh, to educate children, number one, take care of children, but in that there's a lot of layers that can impact your success or, or lack of success, and one of those is parents feeling comfortable, parents feeling welcome, the public feeling welcome, uh, and knowing their boundaries, where they, you know, in a positive way, what are their boundaries? Can, can I just walk in as a salesman and walk all the way down the hall and, and start, um, promoting products to a, um, to a teacher or, you know, uh, maybe it be office supplies. Not. No, you can't, but there's a way you deal with that so that doesn't become a negative uh, towards your school. And so customers can be many different, different um, uh, situations, but, you know, our number one customer, I'd say, is our, our children. And just being inviting, um, and if you have to, you know, you can't always just be the, the bubbly, positive, because there are serious situations come up. But not treating people inappropriately, you know, not 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 being just just inappropriately, whether it be you know wrong tone of voice, um, you know, taking everybody for who they are, respecting them, and providing information back to them. I think that's good customer service, whether it be phone calls or visitors to your school, or you know, uh, we talk to the principals a lot about that, about returning phone calls and returning emails within 24 hours. At least letting parents know you know about the situation. I think all that folds into customer service. Okay. Tim, a couple questions ago, you mentioned that the, um, in some ways the school system was like a business, and, mm -hmm. and, and I would agree, and, and I think it's probably more like a business than a lot of people uh, realize. I mean, we have the employment issues that companies have. Uh, we, we deal with customers, whether they be students, parents, um, and, and prospective employees, uh, members of the public, but, you know, one of the things that's hit me over the 23 years is this. I mean, principals are, in essence, running, you know, they, they deal with a lot of money at the school level and, and several members of their staff, you know, whether it be some front office staff, like their treasurer, uh, teachers at some time, at times have to deal with money. But one of the things I've always taken very seriously, and I, and I think it's, it, it has a big role in this, we talked about budgets. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a business operation, but... You know, I'm a, I'm a trained educator, and, and I hope when, when, when my career is over, you know, I, I, I really have watched a lot of businessmen in the different communities, whether it be involved in the banking industry or running their own business or what, uh, trying to learn and trying to uh, see what they do and pick their brains and, and had a great opportunity where I was my last job because I was on the, the business side of the school system. I was on the finance budget side with HR in the last school system I was at, or a member of, and um, so I just, you know, one of the things I take very seriously is I hope one day when this is all over and I retire, somebody says, there was an educator, a trained educator, who was also a businessman. Because I really believe that is a role that a superintendent and a principal has to, has to fulfill. You, I mean, there is, you just can't say, well, I'm a principal, I'm an academic leader, I'm a superintendent, I'm an academic leader, let the other stuff be handled somewhere. We're a business. I mean, we have, last time I looked, we had over 2,400 employees. This is a business. This is like a company. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to operate with sound business practices. And that's, you know, that's why I enjoy, I've, I've mentioned so many times, I enjoy the interaction with the school board. And, and the budget times too. I enjoy that, even though there's some times that where it's tough because we don't, we don't know what's coming out of the state budget. And, and I enjoy interacting with our local uh, elected officials, our county commissioners. I really enjoy that because mm -hmm. part of my role is to interact with them, with my staff, and show them what our needs are, and then also demonstrate that the resources they give us are being used effectively and efficiently for what our number one purpose is, which is children. 
Well, and to your point, I know that there are times, you, you know, you put on the businessman hat and, and you do that side. But then I also know, and I, and I know you and I see you each day, you, you visit a lot of the schools. And when you walk into that school, I got a feeling that hat comes off and you're seeing the students and the teachers and you're seeing. So here we are near the end of October. We're well into the school year. You're visiting the schools. You're seeing the students. You're seeing the life of the school. Tell me what you see. Well, uh, you know, we, we get information back on the schools. We have an accountability system in the state. But I, I, I tell you what I see, Tim, when I go in these schools. Um, two weeks ago, I was in a classroom in Far at Farmer Elementary. And, you know, I probably, truth be known, I probably messed up. Miss Davis's class I was in, I probably delayed her lesson a little bit. But... The students were talking to me after we I read read with them, and we were talking about context clues and some things. And you know, and I say I messed up her lesson, but what was pretty neat was she was sitting on the side and and just letting me interact with them. And and um, it was a good opportunity for them to show me what Miss Davis has been doing in that classroom with those children and what they've been doing in response to her efforts at Farmer Elementary. I had just been in Miss Nelson's class. Uh, 30 minutes before and it's all the same thing and and I tell you those are two examples of many in this school system the schools are alive and well uh, the kids are learning the teachers have planned there I see great things going on with with children now um, you know we do we have some areas to improve in yes we do and we're working at it but um, you know I was asked this this question and I was a part of a forum uh, back in August and um, there was a question about, you know, public education. And, you know, all you need to do is walk through a school mm -hmm. in the Randolph County school system. And I, I have colleagues all over the state, and they have their, their superintendents of the school systems, and, and I have a lot of respect for, for my colleagues. But I can tell you this, walk in a school, one of the 31 schools in the Randolph County school system, and it, you'll get your answer. Mm -hmm. Is public education broken? Absolutely not. It is not broken. So when you ask me what I'm seeing in schools, I see I see students learning, teachers teaching, principals planning and supporting teachers, and counselors supporting teachers and supporting students. And then there's the other factor, which sometimes goes without notice, but should never go without notice. We have a ton of parents that are supporting their children, which ultimately leads to support for this school system. And that, that, that whole picture to me, you're right. I, I, I had to put on the businessman hat when we're dealing with budgets and different things, but um, there's a whole other picture you can see when you walk on those campuses. And it's a, it's a very, to me, it's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful picture about what's good about public schools and what's good about the future of our country and our state because of the children who are going to leave our schools and are going to assume leadership roles. So, Tim, we did have several administrative changes that were announced uh, last Monday night at the board meeting. And um, begin with, as you know, most of our elementary school system principals are split between two schools, 50% of the time at each school. Well, two elementary schools, Southmont and Hopewell, have continued to grow, and we felt like they needed 100% assistant principal. So, Maria Bruce, who has been split between Archdale Elementary and Hopewell Elementary, actually was moved effective November 9th to be 100% at Hopewell Elementary. Um, and then Amy Garner, who was split between New Market and Southmont, has been moved effective November 9th to be 100% at Southmont Elementary. Um, so we had that cha those two changes, and when those two changes occurred, then we now had an assistant principal job that was split between New Market and Archdale that was vacant. And Anthony Warden was appointed to be in that new assistant principal role. Uh, he has been the PE teacher at John Lawrence Elementary for several years now. He's a great individual, and he will do great things in that role and, and help those schools. So very excited for him, very excited for Maria, and very excited for Amy for their changes. Uh, two other changes that occurred. Uh, Larry Chapel has been named as the new middle school director, and he'll, he'll start in that role on November the 5th. And he was the principal at Trinity High School, and or still is until November, the end of the day, November 4th. And Tim Setzer, a retired principal from our school system, is going to come into Trinity High School starting November 5th, and he's going to stay in that role until the end of the year on an interim basis. So we did have, have some changes that were announced the other night, and um, feel good about all the changes and feel good about um, 
everybody's opportunities in these new roles and, and what they can do to help our school system. As, as we've talked many times, we work really hard on our leadership roles and, and trying to get the right people in the right positions. So feel really good about the changes that occurred and that were announced last Monday night at the board meeting. All right. Well, as always, there are a lot of exciting things going on in the Randolph County school system and uh, we're approaching November and with that, and we don't like to think about it or talk about it, but with cold weather, there's always the possibility for uh, some weather situations. So I want to make you aware that very soon we will be posting on our website our inclement weather videos. So if, if you have uh, questions or just need some basic information on how we handle inclement weather here uh, with school decisions, I think you'll find that video to be very helpful. Again, that will be uh, a link on, our, uh, on the Randolph County School System website. So again, thank you, and thank you, Dr. Ganey, for the, taking the time to do this each month. And again, we thank you. We, th we thank uh, Randolph Communications and RTV for giving us the chance to get out into the community and, uh, and just make you aware of the great things that, that go on in our schools. We'll see you next month.